pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this regularly scheduled meeting of Bowling Green City Council. Okay, would you please begin by calling the roll? Ospacher? Here. Gordon? Here. Harold? Here. Jeffers? Here. Robinette? Here. Roland? Here. Zanfordino? Here. The minutes from the meeting that was held on January 16th, 2018 were distributed to council prior to this <coughs> meeting this evening. Are there any amendments or additions to these minutes? Seeing none, is there a motion to approve? So moved. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The motion passes. The minutes are approved as presented. Okay, do we have other correspondence this evening? Um, yes. Distributed to you prior to the meeting were the budget transfers to be made for the month of February, and those require your approval. Is there a motion to approve the budget transfers? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? <coughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The motion passes. The budget transfers are approved as presented. And also distributed to you prior to the meeting was the financial budget summary report for the month of December 2017. And as distributed to you on Friday with your city council packet, um, Mayor Edwards is requesting confirmation of a reappointment of Frank McLaughlin to the Board of Health for a five-year term expiring February 28th, 2023. That requires your confirmation. Thank you, Kay. Is there a motion to approve the board appointment as presented by Mayor Edwards? So, so moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The motion passes. The board appointment is approved as presented. That's all I have. Thank you, Kay. At this time, we do have a special recognition on our agenda. And it is going to be my great pleasure to stand in place of Mayor Edwards, who is not feeling well this evening, and make a special presentation. So I'm going to step to the left turn in order to do this. On January 16th, 2018, uh, City Council unanimously approved a resolution honoring Robert McComber for his service uh, to the City of Bowling Green as a longtime member of Bowling Green City Council. So on behalf of my colleagues on City Council this evening, Mayor Edwards, Lori Treader, and all of those city um, administrators and members of the staff, um, I'm really very pleased to present this resolution to my longtime peer and longtime friend, Bob McComber. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and take the time to, to read all of the whereas um, that, are, that are involved in this uh, resolution simply because I think it's very important that we take the time to properly honor the service from Mr. McComber. He truly was an outstanding public servant. So whereas Robert McComber honorably and faithfully served the citizens of Bowling Green as a council member at large from January 1st, 2006 until December 31st, 2017, and whereas during his three terms on council, Mr. McComber consistently demonstrated superb leadership through analysis, thoughtful judgment, and an earnest concern for his constituents, and whereas Mr. McComber's abilities were manifested through his open-minded and innovative approaches to problems, astute and comprehensive understanding and investigation of issues, and solid methods for identifying solutions in addressing his responsibilities as chair of the finance and public utility committees, and as a member of the community improvement planning and zoning, economic development, public lands, and transportation and safety committee. Bob truly was involved in everything that we do. And whereas, serving in his capacity as finance committee chair, Mr. McComber led council through the difficult task of identifying viable options to solve the city's structural deficit within the general fund and ultimately led to a 2018 general fund balanced budget and whereas Mr. McComber's knowledge of government and finance, as well as his bipartisan approach to issues, contributed to a strong foundation for insightful and considerate decision-making that ultimately proved beneficial 
or other members of council to better understand issues. And whereas the objective, thoughtful, and logical approaches to difficult governmental and community problems demonstrated by Mr. McComber, especially considering his time of service during a significant economic downturn, were greatly appreciated by council, the administration, and the entire community. And whereas this council wishes to publicly recognize and honor Mr. McComber for his many important contributions to civic betterment, his dedicated and faithful service as an elected official, and his notorious service to this community, now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the City of Bowling Green that the City of Bowling Green, on behalf of the government and the citizens of this municipality, does hereby thank and commend Mr. McComber, Council Member at Large, for his devoted service, distinguished and notorious achievements, and remarkable performance of civic duty as a member of City Council, and wishes him success and satisfaction in his future endeavors. Also, that the Clerk of Council is thereby authorized and instructed to forward duly attested, signed, and framed copy of this resolution to Mr. McComber. It was my pleasure to do that this evening and say thank you, Bob. We really appreciate all you've done. Thank you very much. Uh, it's certainly uh, gratifying to have something like this happen after a dozen years of service on city council. Um, it was something I've had a very nice send off over the last couple of months from a lot of people that have come up to me and said thank you, or uh, I even got a few notes in the mail, that kind of thing. Uh, so I certainly, certainly leave with a lot of good feelings. I, I would mention to you, uh, I found very quickly when I, my term ended on city council that there is a difference between being on that side of the table <laughs> and, and this side of the table. On, uh, I brought it with me here, it's very short. On January 2nd, I wrote to my ward councilman. <laughs> I wrote, I have my first complaint as a private citizen. <laughs> when the heck is council gonna do something about this weather? It's an outrage. <laughs> I promptly got back the following response from my unnamed ward councilman. <laughs> Dear valued constituent, I knew I was in trouble when I read that much. Please be aware that weather concern should be directed to the mayor's office <laughs> as this is considered an executive branch function. As always, thanks for sharing your concerns. <laughs> so having put me in my place quite, quite quickly once I'm off council, I, although there weren't a lot of people here back at the last meeting in December, we went through a lot of these folks up here said a lot of nice things about me at the last meeting in December, and I thanked a lot of people that have been supportive over the years. And afterwards, I thought I had in my mind a mental list of people I wanted to thank, and I, I, I went through everybody, but I forgot one group of people, and I want to rectify that tonight if I can just take a minute or so to do that, which is I particularly, in addition to my colleagues and the administration and my wife and so on and so forth, I want to be sure to thank the people that voted for me in all the various elections I was in over the years. My name appeared on the ballot five different times, three times as a, running for city council, twice for the school board before that. And there are people out there that have voted for me as many as five times over 18 years. And both the uh, school board and council positions, to my mind, are basically volunteer jobs, volunteer work but you don't get to do them unless you get enough people to vote for you. So I certainly am appreciative of all the people that supported me at the ballot box over the years, recognizing that I wouldn't have had the opportunity to work with all of these fine people, the administration, if it had, not, had it been not for those people that came out and, and checked the box next to me. So thanks to them as well as everybody else, and I, again, I wish everybody nothing but the best in the future. I noticed that at the end of December, there were many, many great things said uh, and well-deserved uh, to, uh, to honor Bob, uh, mostly by people on council here. And since I, my term didn't start till January, I didn't have my chance to, to echo 
uh, much of what was said. So, Bob, I've had the chance to see you in action, and I, that's an important distinction, not in action, but in action uh, throughout the years, and uh, I want to personally thank you for all your work. Uh, you treated the position uh, with great respect and uh, got a lot accomplished. And I hope that when you look at yourself in the mirror, you can see that you left it all on the field, that you gave it your all, and uh, certainly that's, that's what I see when I think of what you've done. And uh, also to answer your question about the weather, I did have a constituent jog by me the other day and said, what are you gonna, what are you gonna, when are you gonna take care of the weather? And my prompt response was uh, August. <laughs> and so anyway, thank you, Bob. Thank you, Bill. <clears throat> Moving on our agenda, um, we, we arrive at lobby visitation. <clears throat> Okay, do we have anyone that has signed up to address City Council this evening? Do you want to do the swear? The oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yep. Yes, so at this time I'll ask Mr. Marsh to approach and perform a very important function. I William Mormon. I William Mormon. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. To do my duty as fire chief. To do my duty as fire chief. For the city of Bowling Green. For the city of Bowling Green. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. I will support the Constitution of the United States. I will support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of Ohio. The Constitution of the State of Ohio. And the Charter of the City of Bowling Green. And the Charter of the City of Bowling Green. I will protect, safeguard, and preserve life. I will protect, safeguard, and preserve life. Health and property against fire and other perils. Health and property against fire and other perils. I recognize the badge of my office. I recognize the badge of my office. As a symbol of public faith and trust. As a symbol of public faith and trust. And I will remain true to the ethics of the fire service. And I will remain true to the ethics of the fire service. There's another paragraph. <laughs> <laughs> I take this obligation freely. I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And I will faithfully discharge the duties. And I will faithfully discharge the duties. Of the position to which I am appointed. Of the position to which I am appointed. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you very much. We're on a new captain, and that's Dave Hagemeyer. <laughs> Congratulations, Dave. Dave, if you raise your right hand. I, David Hagemeyer. I, David Hagemeyer. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. 
to do my duty as fire captain. To do my duty as fire captain. For the city of Bowling Green. For the city of Bowling Green. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. I will support the Constitution of the United States. I will support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of Ohio. And the Constitution of the State of Ohio. And the Charter of the City of Bowling Green. And the Charter of the City of Bowling Green. I will protect, safeguard, and preserve life. I will protect, safeguard, and preserve life. Health and property against fire and other perils. Health and property against fire and other perils. I recognize the badge of my office. I recognize the badge of my office. As a symbol of public faith and trust. As a symbol of public faith and trust. And I will remain true to the ethics of the fire service. I will remain true to the ethics of the fire service. I take this obligation freely and without mental reservation or purpose of evasion. I take this I take this oath <laughs> obligation I freely. I take this obligation freely without, without, any, mental without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And I will faithfully discharge. And I will faithfully discharge the duties of the position to which I am appointed. The duties to the position to which I am appointed. You guys wrote this. <laughs> <laughs> And we have a new lieutenant, Aaron Bear. Anybody that came with Aaron? Yours is really short, Aaron. It just says ditto. <laughs> no, that's, that's the wrong sign. You raise your right hand. I, Aaron Bear. I, Aaron Bear. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. To do my duty as fire captain. To do my duty as fire lieutenant. Yeah. <laughs> To the city of Bowling Green. To the city of Bowling Green. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. I will support the Constitution of the United States. I will support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of Ohio. The Constitution of the State of Ohio. And the Charter of the City of Bowling Green. And the Charter of the City of Bowling Green. I will protect, safeguard, and preserve life. I will protect, safeguard, and preserve life. Health and property against fire and other perils. Health and property against fire and other perils. I recognize the badge of my office. I recognize the badge of my office. As a symbol of public faith and trust. As a symbol of public faith and, faith and trust. And I will remain true to the ethics of the fire service. And I will remain true to the ethics of the fire service. I take this obligation freely. I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. For purpose of evasion. For purpose of evasion. And I will faithfully discharge. And I will faithfully discharge. The duties of the position. The duties of the position. To which I have been appointed. To which I have been appointed. Congratulations.
City Council offer my congratulations to our newly sworn in officers of the fire division. We thank you very much for your service. Okay, we will now proceed with lobby visitation. Kay, have we had residents who have signed up to address City Council this evening? Um, yes. The first one is Mark Hyder. If you are going to address Council this evening, we ask that you please approach the lectern and clearly nate or state your name and address for our record. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Mark Hyder. I live at 403 West Worcester Street, Bowen Green. Um, I guess it's a little bit of serendipity that you had the swearing in of the uh, fire personnel uh, before my first statement here. Um, I want to say congratulations to the new chief, captain, and lieutenant, first of all. Um, second of all, I'd like to read something that I prepared so I make sure I get it correct. Um, I want to take a moment to commend personnel from the Bowling Green Police and Fire Divisions for their efforts on behalf of my father on the afternoon of Friday, January 12th, 2018. My father experienced a medical emergency while traveling in my vehicle on Gypsy Lane Road in Bowling Green. Despite the snowy conditions, the first police officer arrived in about a minute from the time I was able to find a safe place to park. Uh, the first officer there took over CPR for me immediately upon arrival, with other officers assisting him shortly thereafter. A squad and fire truck arrived from the fire division within minutes, and fire personnel did a fantastic job of assessing the situation and carefully transferring my father to the ambulance. Once there, they made a valiant attempt to revive him while transporting him through slippery conditions on the way to the hospital. All of the first responders involved were professional, extremely competent, helpful, and caring. Unfortunately, I did not get all of their names to relate here, but I want to, to mention a paramedic, and I hope I have his name right because I'm going by memory, uh, Nick Espinosa specifically. He was at the emergency room as the hospital staff continued revival efforts and proceeded to kneel next to my mother who was sitting in a chair in the treatment room. He spoke some words quietly to her and gave her a hug. It was wonderful to see his compassion for our family, showing that he truly cares for those who are affected by the emergency situations to which he routinely responds. Based on the actions of the BG first responders that day, I believe such is the rule and not the exception within the police and fire division. Although my father never regained consciousness, I truly believe those who responded did everything that could have been done to save his life, and I wanted to thank them publicly for their efforts. I 
have one other subject I'd like to address very briefly, and I didn't write this one down. And it has to do with the new regulations regarding uh, the $13 fee for the trash pickup and the $5 per additional can. Um, I completely understand the Bowling Green's position as far as the budget goes, and I think that was a good compromise to continue to provide service that we've come to expect. Um, the issue I have is, after receiving a letter a day or two ago from the city, we are one of the residences that has two trash cans, one of which we paid for a number of years ago. Uh, my sister contacted the Public Works Department regarding my mother, who also has one and has no need for two of them now, her household, and she was told that the city would collect these and that there would be no uh, reimbursement of the cost of that can to the residents. Um, I don't know if that was the intent of council or if that's the policy that was decided upon just by the administration or who made that decision, but it seems to me that since we paid for that can well before there was any thought of a fee, that I shouldn't have to give it back to the city. And the person my sister spoke to said they would just repurpose that can for someone else who needed it in the future. So it's possible that the city could resell that can again to some other resident and get paid twice for it. I realize it's not a lot of money, but I don't really want to pay $60 a year rent on a trash can that I paid for. And I think it would be only fair if we wish to not have that extra $5 fee that we would be given the option of getting whatever money we paid back. To be honest, it was a number of years ago. I don't even know how much it was. It was probably in the $60 range. The other disappointing thing is the city also sold us, since we had a trash can lid that was broken, it wouldn't stay on the trash can anymore. We had to have that replaced for $35. And now that is presumably going to be going back to the city. So that's just an additional expense that we did within the last couple months that we're not getting our money back for. I guess I just didn't realize I realize this was coming down the pike, and I know you had a lot of discussions about whether you would uh, allow people to take time off and exempt themselves if they're going to be out of town for multiple months and so forth. I didn't see anything in the record talking about whether residents should be refunded their money for the second trash can should they choose to turn it back in. So my request is that there be some discussion on that. Um, I think it would be fair for all those who paid for one and don't want to pay the extra $60 a year to have the option to give it back without it just being a gift to the city. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Hyder. First of all, um, let me thank you for your remarks as it relates to the actions of the police and our fire departments, and also please accept my uh, sincere condolences on the passing of your father. Um, as it relates to your comments about the, uh, the trash containers, um, really, I was just made aware of this uh, this morning and really have not had a whole lot of time to talk with Ms. Treader about it, but um, we will um, consider your comments and your concerns and we'll um, respond to you, you know, in, a, in an appropriate time frame that will um, hopefully render a decision on that will be fair. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, Mary Hinkleman. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. Mary Hinkleman, representing downtown Bowling Green, um, 130 South Main Street in downtown. Um, I want to remind everybody this is a big weekend for us for Winterfest celebration. Um, on Friday evening, our merchants have um, put together a chocolate crawl, and it's benefiting the United Way. Um, if you're going to get a ticket, I would suggest get it soon. Um, ticket sales are over 300 tickets as we speak. Um, at $10 a ticket, that's really nice for the United Way. Um, we have 18 merchants that have um, decided to participate in this, so again, please thank them for being a participant. Um, it's getting people in the door, and I will tell you from the online sales, we are drawing people from very far away. We even have people coming from Illinois, so this is an exciting time for the downtown. Um, and then we're going to go right into um, the Winterfest celebration activities on Saturday. There's things happening all over the city. I'm just reporting on some of the things for the downtown, so don't think I'm leaving anybody out because Kristen's following. So on Saturday, um, the ice garden, the sculptures for the ice garden, um, the people that sponsored those, um, we've put together the biggest ice 
garden that we've ever had. We have 30 sculptures and a six foot ice bar. Um, you've got to come out and see. We've um, got some interactive things that people can win prizes. We're working with social media and all kinds of fun things. So looking forward to the weekend and I hope I see you all there. Thank you, Mary. Sounds like the weather's gonna cooperate. <laughs> <clears throat> Kyle Evans Hi there uh, Today I'd like to speak on uh, Bowling Green Utilities um, and I've lived on uh, Sugar Ridge Road now for about a year and I keep getting utility bills in the range of anywhere from three, $370 all the way up until the newest one has been $480. Um, in, the, in the past here, I, there was an occasion where I was very <laughs> ill. I ended up having 11 ulcers, uh, bleeding ulcers. Um, it, was, it, it put me to the point where I was in so much pain I couldn't work. Um, I had no help. I was pretty much, I had no means of, of anything. Um, it got down to a point where they were, I called them, I told them that I wasn't going to be able to make the bill, um, told them my, my situation, they pretty told, they pretty much told me, there's nothing we can do, you're going to get shut off. Um, three days later, they ended up shutting my bill off, I had an infant son there, I forced me to leave my home, um, it, it pretty much, I looked at it like, wow, you know, here I am, uh, you know, resident of Bowling Green, and I, I love this town, I, I love this community, and you're telling me that you're just going to shut me off, not give me, you know, even a month's time to really come up with any way to, to you know, I ended up, I'm a union member, so the only way that I was able to get my electric turned back on was going through United Way, and they helped me get my stuff turned back on. But, the way that I look at this is really there's there's three there's really three thought there's three sections of this there's okay we we're let's say seventy percent college student okay so every year we have rental after rental after rental that builds up two three four college student okay then we have you know these poor kids come in they're getting minimum wage jobs. You know, they're, they're making $150, $200, maybe $250 a week, you know, and then they, they get socked with, you know, eight, $900, $1,200 for a house here in BG. All right, and then on top of it, you're now socking them with a three, a four, a $500 electric bill each month. I mean, some of them are just the ones that, at, that heat with electric baseboard heating and, and the ones that, you know, have the the landlords that refuse to fix anything and the, i don't feel like the renter should be you know at fault and have to go into measures as far as you know have to pull money out of their own wallet to fix somebody else's property just so that they're not paying you know four or five hundred dollar electric bills uh, the next one would be you know, Bowling Green residents as far as locals. You know, you have locals here that have, you know, historical homes. We have homes that, you know, they've been here for hundreds, a hundred years. Uh, th these homes, you know, they're gonna be drafty. They're gonna be, there's no way to fix these homes that are a hundred years old. I'm a contractor, I build, I know. You know, and it's, it comes down to the point where you know, people are paying so much money, there ought to be some kind of discounts for being local. Um, also, um, the, the seniors. You know, when, when you look at it, there's all kinds of, outs, on the outskirts of town here, there's all kinds of senior homes, senior developments, and what it really comes down to is they're all on fixed incomes. Everybody in those, those villas and homes back there, everybody's on fixed incomes. So when you're getting electric bills for $400 a month or 300 or even 250, you know, that's an extremely high bill every month. 
and uh, I think with uh, honestly with you know we've got the windmills over here we've got solar power over here up Dunbridge Road or wherever that's at you know there, there ought to be Bowling Green has gone towards going green so I mean there ought to be some way we can start coming down on the electrical uh, utilities because it's really taken effect to the citizens of Bowling Green. That's really all I have. Thank you, Mr. Evans. <clears throat> appreciate your comments. I'm sure that you can appreciate that um, the, uh, the policies that were put in place that um, resulted in your utility service being um, discontinued are, are policies that are established by the city and the Board of Public Utilities. Um, and it's important that those policies are instituted um, consistently. So your individual case, although troubling, I, I, I understand this. I think that I hope you can understand anyways that the policies that are in place are meant to be um, fair and, and again need to be um, instituted consistently. Um, I would just it, a person's utility bill and how much it's going to cost um, is dependent on a lot of different factors. Um, and it's difficult for us as a group this evening really to respond to your concerns because, frankly, we don't really know, you know the specifics of your house, the specifics of your consumption. There's just a lot of different things that go into it. So my recommendation is that um, if you'd like to pursue the matter further to um, locate, or I'm sorry, to contact our public utilities office and perhaps they can make some recommendations as to energy improvement opportunities within your home in order to uh, lessen your bill. So. I understand. Thank you. Okay, are there others? Um, I can't read the last name, but Rachel Chapman. Hi, my name is Rachel Chapman. I live at, um, I actually live at 216 South Marcy. I just realized I wrote my previous address on there. I'll have to change that. Um, and I'm also here to talk about a matter of rentals and of uh, landlords and stuff. Um, so uh, I've lived in Bowling Green for five years now. Um, I'm a graduate of BGSU. Um, I work in the BG City School System now as a teaching assistant. And um, you know, I really love Bowling Green. I love living here. Um, but I'm here to talk about a matter that's been concerning me for a while now, uh, which is I've lived in four different rental agencies, and um, None of them ever offer recycling as an option, and you know everybody I've talked to who's rented, you know, just recycling is not an option anywhere. Um, and yet, I've talked to people that rent homes, and they still have that as as an option when they when they move into rent a house. And people that own houses obviously have have the recycling. Um, and we have a really great recycling program in this city, and it's just it's very troubling to me that half of our population don't have access to this service that you know, some that the other half do. Um, I will say, I, I'm not entirely sure how paying for this works. I understand there's been some changes with like the waste removal and things like that. Um, but I know in my current apartment, I pay for um, trash removal, uh, but there's no option to have, even to pay to have recycling. Um, and you just, you just are expected to throw everything into the garbage. And um, you can drive it yourself to the recycling center, but 
Um, I've only owned a car for a year and a half now, and so before that, I had to rely on friends to take me to the recycling center or on just just throw it in the garbage, which is leading to just huge amounts of recycling just being thrown away and filling up our landfill when we could, you know, be taking this to the center. And I guess I don't really understand why why so many people are being left without this this basic service that everybody else, that the other half of the city gets. Um, and yeah, and it's a long way to ride your bike to the recycling center, I'll tell you that. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm just, I'd like to know, yeah, why, what's going on with like the landlords and the rental agencies that they're not offering this service to residents. Can you provide? Well, first of all, I want to congratulate you for being concerned about recycling. Thank you very much. That, that makes me extremely happy to have someone say they, they are recycling and want to do more. It was a decision a long time ago that the city of Bowling Green could not at that time um, financially support picking up from re recycling products from businesses. And if you live in an apartment complex, which you apparently do, am mm -hmm. I right? Yeah. And not in a house. No, yeah. I, it, it just, it was a decision made before I was ever on console, a long time mm -hmm. before I was ever on console, that they would not be picking up from businesses. Businesses were going to have to pay for their own recycling. I would like to ask if you talk to the landlord to ask if they would somehow um, make a provision with recycling could be possible well when I've, I've when I've spoken to my current landlord they pretty much made it clear that they don't have any interest in providing that and that you should just take it yourself um, to the to the center mm -hmm. um, so yeah I guess I'd, I'd like to urge City Council then to you know maybe reconsider this since it you know it's been something that's been a long time and you know consider maybe how you know that I'd like to see the city put more pressure on the landlords to offer this this pretty basic service and use this great recycling program that we have. It's, mm -hmm. it's a shame that a lot of it is To get the history, you also may want to talk with the person in charge of picking up the recycling. Mm -hmm. um, he's not here tonight. Um, he's also the person who uh, Mr. Hyder might have wanted to talk to tonight about the um, provision for returning his, mm -hmm. his um, bin. Um, but you might want to do that just to get the background because you were asking us the background and you can mm -hmm. get the definite background for them. And um, if there's anything you think of that we can yeah. do, share it with me and I'll bring it to council as a consideration. I am pro-recycling myself and Thanks. would like to see answers to it, but it's, it's a money issue. Okay. It's a big money issue. Bowling Green is really a small town of 10,000 people, mm -hmm. 30 with the And at the time the decision was made, we just couldn't do business. And that included the apartment. What's the, what's the name of this person you said I should contact? The public works, the public works department, okay. um, and the, the head of that. But you could just call the call public works department and say you wanted someone to get the. Okay, I'll look into that further. Thank you. Okay. Thank just you. a little tactical suggestion is if you can find out the value of recyclables and uh, see if they can pay for themselves, and then maybe the property owner would be interested in that. I know for us. We would have to have a separate type of truck for big bins since we, we pick up small containers and those trucks might be two, 200,000 plus, so it would be quite an undertaking for us. I think even just having the, the smaller bins, which I know can be picked up by the truck, would, would make a difference in, in these kinds of settings. Like even if you just had a few of the smaller ones that, you know, as an option to people. Share your ideas with us, okay, in writing, and keep in touch. Thank you. And uh, Rachel, as someone who uh, was on council when, when we, re we started recycling at the curb, um, there was a, more of a delineation between the, the rentals, meaning rentals with three or more units, as, as well as businesses. And uh, there's a couple dynamics that have changed recently. One is charging which we started in January, which uh, I don't know as if it dramatically changes things, but it does change things a bit. And then also uh, the, uh, the plan to have a uh, sustainability uh, coordinator hired. And I would uh, encourage you to uh, 
keep your eye on uh, the, the news outlets. We have great news outlets. Uh, find out when that sustainability coordinator is hired, and uh, that would be a great place for a next step um, in addition to the other suggestions. But keep the pressure on. Things are different now than they were even a few months ago. Thank you, Rach. <clears throat> that is all. Thank you all for your comments. It is time for the introduction of new legislation. I'll begin by presenting several ordinances from the Public Utilities Committee. I have an ordinance authorizing the transfer of approximately 3.99 acres of land in the Woodbridge Business Park expansion to the Bowling Green Community Development Foundation in lieu of dues and declaring an emergency. An ordinance authorizing the utilities director to enter into a contract or contracts with Andritz Separation Incorporated without advertising and bidding to provide maintenance services to the centrifuge at the water pollution control facility. And finally, an ordinance certifying to the county auditor delinquent sewer charges. Mr. President, Mr. Harold, I have a uh, proposed ordinance amending and adopting section 31.26 of the codified ordinances of the city of Bowling Green, Ohio, regarding roll call of vote. Thank you, Bill. We move on to official reports. As I had mentioned earlier this evening, Mayor Edwards is not feeling well and is unable to be here. So on behalf of Mayor Edwards, City Council, and our administrators, uh, Lori Treader and Joe Fawcett, I'm pleased to at this time identify those individuals that have volunteered to serve on the 2018 Charter Review Committee. Um, this uh, uh, process of reviewing and potentially recommending changes to the Charter is really very extremely important work and um, I think it's worth noting that this is only the third time since 1972 that the city has undergone this process. Um, I'm pleased to inform you that Shannon Orr and Jeff Crawford will be acting as the committee co-chairs and that the first meeting of the committee is scheduled uh, to occur on February 22nd at 4 p.m. in, in um, council chambers. So the other members, I'll just read the whole list of the uh, Charter Review Committee members in its entirety. Evelyn Bachman, Les Barber, Julie Broadwell, Sylvia Chandler, Ali Cipriani, Jeff Crawford, Bill Culbertson, Greg Dickerson, John Fawcett, Gary Hess, Mark Hollenbaugh, Susan Klotz, Chet Marson, Shannon Orr, Rachel Phipps, Andy Shockett and Tom Walton. As we began, the I should say that this list um, really is uh, represents a combined effort by members of the administration, the mayor, Lori and Joe, and city council to work collaboratively to put together a committee that we um, hoped would uh, represent a, a wide cross section of our community, um, certainly by rep representing all four of the wards in the city and also by uh, representing the diversity within our community. And I really believe that we've achieved this um, in the final makeup of the committee. And um, I, I guess, uh, yeah, the, we're, we're very eager for the committee to begin its work. Um, as I mentioned, they're going to begin their first, they're gonna have their first meeting February 22nd. And it's uh, been communicated to the committee that we're hopeful that they will have their work done by the end of May, and at that time they would forward to City Council any recommendations on changes to the Charter. So again, we'd like to take uh, the opportunity to thank these individuals for their willingness to serve on the committee um, and also for their dedication to the community. So this list will, we can make this list available to other council members this evening, and we will be <coughs> eager to assist the committee in beginning their work. So that's all I have from the mayor's office. Now we'll move to our municipal administrator, Ms. Treader. Thank you, Mike, and good evening, city council members. I'd like to start off with a thank you 
for giving the time in your meeting to the fire division and for those swearing ins. As you know, that's not something we do regularly. And, and I know it takes time on, and you have a busy agenda this evening, but we feel it's so important. The, the folks represented here have worked very hard to get to those positions. I wish I had, I had totaled up the number of years that they've served, but it's, it's decades when you combine them all, and they've all been very hardworking individuals. And of course, we have complete confidence in them and are very excited for their promotion and know that they will serve the city well. So thank you for bearing witness uh, to that special ceremony this evening. Um, I'm transitioning now to a, a somewhat difficult topic to discuss. Uh, we have, uh, if you have driven by the Conneaut Haskins Park at all today, you've noticed that there is caution tape around the large tree there on the hill. And we have had to close the sledding hill temporarily due to a safety concern with that tree. And I'm gonna hand out pictures to council to see uh, what's going on. I don't know if there's enough for all of you or not. Uh, but what has happened is that a very large crack has developed in the tree, and I'm not sure if, if on the camera if you can see this or not, but we can pass a few of these around in the audience. Uh, so what is happening is that this large part of the tree is separating um, from the other tree or from the rest of the tree and we've had our arborist look at it we've had another arborist come in to look at it and assess the tree and with the winter conditions the condition of the tree and the danger that is there is getting worse and worse and it is of, of high concern to us and as safety officials we cannot have children be on that hill with that tree there. So we have made the difficult decision to remove the tree and the sled hill will be closed until we get the tree removed. Um, on a bright spot, uh, we do plan to use the wood from the tree to build some benches for the park. And of course, as spring comes around and as we move forward, we will look at other ways to provide shading in the Conneaut Haskins Park, uh, knowing that maybe not in the middle of the hill where the children's sled is the best place for the tree. So we'll, we'll, we'll place them strategically, right, Kristen? And of course, work with our wonderful arborist, Grant Jones, in, in doing that work. So any questions from council about that action? This has already hit Facebook, so huh, I knew about it and people are wondering how long it's gonna take. Given it's the winter time right now, how long might it take for Actually, trucks to get in and, and cut this down? Winter is when you want to do this work okay. uh, because the ground is, is frozen. solid, okay. frozen. So it is our hope to get it done this week. Oh, that's great. I think people will be happy with that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mary already mentioned Winterfest, so we hope that you will uh, come out and enjoy the festivities throughout the town. But speaking of winter and Winterfest, we've had a very active winter thus far, and if you watch the local forecasters are telling us that we will continue to have a very active weather pattern. I don't mean to sound like a broken record. I know last time I mentioned the city snow regulations, but I would be remiss if I didn't remind folks that when we get more than two inches of snow, when we hit that two inch mark, snow emergencies go into effect. Please get your cars off the street. Anytime we have a snow that you can remove vehicles though is just gonna aid in getting those streets cleared more quickly and that folks need to be shoveling sidewalks as well. We have a lot of people in town, uh, including our school children, of course, who depend on those sidewalks to traverse the town. And it's very important that we keep those cleared um, as much as possible. And that completes my report this evening. Other questions for Lori? I have a question, Lori, uh, not to broaden this tree discussion, but it did make me think to go look at a huge tree, probably the biggest in the city, on North Main Street. It's on private property. Uh, it might might have white X disease, so this might be a moot point, but it's, it's, it, I'm hoping it would be taken down. I forget, we discussed this a couple years ago, and I forget what our power is in terms of a tree that we might deem dangerous. We do have a process that should a tree be determined to be a hazard tree, that the city can order it down. I don't know the status with that tree, whether that's been determined as a hazard tree, but I do know it's something our arborist has looked at with, on a regular basis, and I'd be glad to follow up 
with him and, and get you information on the status of that tree. As you correctly stated, though, Bruce, that is on private property, making it the responsibility of the property owner. Thanks. Welcome. Thank you, Lori. Thanks. Planning Director, Ms. Saylor. Questions for Heather. <coughs> Thank you. Parks and Recreation Director, Ms. Otley. Very short. You wanted me to say no report, but Mary said I was going to report. So, um, just very briefly, uh, just to follow up on on Winterfest, fill in some of the the rest of the details. But um, very exciting. Last year uh, was the first year of the tent downtown um, that has returned. Um, it is going to be larger. Uh, we anticipate a larger crowd. So please make us look smart um, and show up and fill that tent. We've nearly doubled the size of the tent. Um, I know it'll be cold outside, but there's flaps and there's heaters, um, and we will have um, five taps of beer on tap um, and three wines available to um, keep you warm. Um, but uh, the, the, uh, the, the frozen swamp tent, as it was named last year, I think, by some who were there, um, will open at 4 o'clock and goes to 11, I believe. Um, prior to that, uh, new this year, there is a winter market um, at the tent. I believe that starts at 10. I was going to say 10, and then you said 2. Um, 10 o'clock. So uh, similar to the farmer's market, um, obviously they will not have some of the produce that's at the farmer's market, but things that are um, appropriate this time of year. Um, so come and check that out. There are things going on all over town. Um, obviously in City Park, we have a few things going on. The Frostbite One Mile Fun Run. You can run, jog, or walk. Uh, registration, you can still register. Get a cool long sleeve t-shirt. Thanks to Big B for sponsoring that. Um, that begins at 11. Um, and then the, uh, the women's groups, there's three different uh, women's uh, service groups in the community that put on the chili and soup cook-off. Um, it's probably too late to enter your chili or soup, but you please come and um, I think it's for $5 you get a tasting um, and it's really, really good stuff uh, and just a cool community event. Um, and they're raising money for scholarships with that. So um, we have a kids event going on um, after the fun run, uh, cookie decorating in City Park. The Winterfest Facebook page has all the details, um, but there's all kinds of things going on. Volunteers are still needed, so if you want to get involved that way, see Mary, um, not me, see Mary, or contact the Convention and Visitors Bureau, but you can see Mary tonight and she'll get your info. Um, and I've uh, been getting a lot of great media coverage, so as always, thank you to the media in the back, but WTOL is also a sponsor, so tune in if you haven't been tuning in to see um, and some of us will be up, not that early, but um, on their morning show sometime this week. So, your day. So, you can tune into that if you're around. Um, but other than that, just please, please come um, participate in any way that you can. Horse and carriage rides, downtown, all kinds of fun stuff. So, that's all I have. I had the safety services director tell you about the tree. So. There. <laughs> other questions for Kristen? Great. Thanks. Thank you. Good luck this weekend. City Attorney, Mr. Marsh. Questions for Mr. Marsh? <coughs> Thank you. Utilities Director, Mr. O'Connell. Uh, just an update on the uh, Conneaut Avenue Sanitary Sewer Project. Um, the work is, you can see, starting out there now near the Conneaut Park itself. Um, so they're going to st start putting in the force main from that location uh, back to the west towards uh, west of uh, Winter Garden Road. Uh, that's where the, we'll construct the new lift station. That'll, that'll happen between March and June, roughly. Um, the gravity uh, sanitary sewer work will be done July to August timeframe, so during the summertime. And then August to September will be asphalt the street of Conneaut, or repave Conneaut, and then site restoration for any, any disturbed areas um, after that point. So uh, the section that was left unpaved or finished uh, from the previous paving project uh, that will get paved with this prop when this project is completed but the uh, force main work that you'll see from uh, Conneaut Park going to the west is going to be directional drilled um, so there shouldn't be any um, open cut sections along the pavement area that should be outside of the, the pavement and the, the grass boulevard or the right of way through there. Uh, the other item I had was uh, just an update on the uh, microfil microfiltration module placement out at the water treatment plant. 
Um, that work is going to be going on this week. Should take them four or five days to complete. So hopefully by Friday, uh, the microfiltration modules are all um, replaced, and that you know those two two trains will be back to original equipment status. So that's all I have. Unless you have questions for me. No questions for Brian. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. And our public works director, Mr. Kraft, is unable to be with us this evening. That conducts our official re reports. We move forward to council committee reports. Are there <coughs> any council committee reports this evening? Uh, oh, Bill, would you like to read on? Oh, Mr. President, uh, this is not strictly speaking a council committee report, um, but I did want to recognize somebody who, on a normal night, might be in attendance and isn't with us anymore. Um, I received word over the weekend that Marge Miller had passed away and uh, I'd considered her a friend, so I would appreciate if we could give her a moment of silence. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Additional. Yeah, I, I'll call this a report from maybe the whole or something. Anyway, I had the opportunity to attend the TMACOG meeting I know you, you, you were there last year, I believe, but Yes, I have in the past. And, uh, and it was very informative, and I just want to, want to share that it was very informative. I sat through the city caucus, uh, very well attended by, by mayors and, and city council people from the village and cities and Toledo. Um, and um, the bonus is showing up. You get elected to be an alternate uh, uh, trustee. But... Uh, I also, but what struck me was uh, we heard from the mayor of Toledo, and uh, and I was very encouraged by the way he's approaching regional cooperation, especially on water. Uh, now there were six Toledo council members there as well. Uh, they seemed a little less enthusiastic than their mayor. Uh, their silence, and, uh, but uh, it's going to be very interesting to monitor. Because I think you know, we will benefit from the larger regional uh, efforts uh, as well. But it was very encouraging. Mm -hmm. Also learned at that uh, uh, Cog meeting that the Waterville Charter Amendment, their so-called Bill of Rights, was in fact found unconstitutional, and Bowling Green voters were both part of the of here in our town. Um, well, that's all. Thank you, Greg. I'm I'm happy you were able to attend that meeting. I was out of town um, visiting family, so was unable to attend. Um, Team Macaga is very important. I had the opportunity to serve on a couple of different commissions last year. And one thing that I discovered um, that although um, much of the recent uh, discussion that we're hearing from Team Macaga relates to um, the regional water issue, um, there is a tremendous amount of activity that takes place in that group that affects Bowling Green from a transportation standpoint. And it's very important that we remain um, in tune and, and uh, involved with that board. So thank you for your service for this year. It's just very important that we uh, remain represented so that we can get our piece of the pie for these transportation um, projects as they come along. So thank you very much. Additional council reports. Hey, uh, just since you brought up transportation, is there any, any discussion that you heard of anything other than building roads and highways? Any any um, mass transit type things in discussion of any type? No, not really. The the, the focus of the of, of most of the discussion uh, was on the water. This particular city caucus, uh, there was there was an, uh, we were made aware. Uh, the city group was made aware that the that county boards commissioners are. Uh, Struggling with some, some issues regarding transportation funding, but that there there no action on, uh, on transportation discussion other than to put some issues on the table for future. No. Um, under the heading of council committee reports, I would like to follow up on a discussion that we had at our strategic uh, planning meeting a couple of weeks ago where we discussed as a group um, an interest in engaging in a discussion as it relates to food trucks. Um, I've had an opportunity to confer with uh, Ms. Tretter, 
and have determined that what we would like to do at this point is to assign uh, this discussion to our public lands committee that is headed by um, Mr. Harold. Other members of that committee are uh, Ms. Rowland and Mr. Zanfordino. So um, I have forwarded to, to Mr. Harold um, some basic background information that um, the sailor put together for us that I think is going to be very helpful um, uh, as, we, as we begin the discussion. So, um, beginning now, Bill, it's kind of your ball in court. Um, I would assume that you know you will coordinate with your committee members and also confer with Lori and Joe and and Heather to uh, um, acquire the background information and um, start having some discussions in a public manner about the possibilities that could be identified to allow um, food trucks or or other such mobile vendors to um, function in our city. Um, and we very much look forward to that conversation in the coming year. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. If that concludes our council committee reports, we will proceed with the reading of legislation. Legislation for first reading. <clears throat> Ordinance number 8662 for first reading. Ordinance authorizing the transfer of approximately 3.99 acres of land in the Woodbridge Business Park expansion to the Bowling Green Community Development Foundation in lieu of dues and declaring an emergency. Ordinance number 8663 for first reading. Ordinance authorizing the utilities director to enter into a contract or contracts with Andrix Separation Incorporated without advertising and bidding to provide maintenance services to the centrifuge at the water pollution control facility. Ordinance number 8664 for first reading, ordinance certifying to the county auditor delinquent sewer charges. Ordinance number 8665 for first reading, ordinance amending and adopting section 31.26 of the codified ordinances of the city of Bowling Green, Ohio regarding roll call vote. Legislation for second reading. Resolution number 3694 for second reading. Resolution authorizing the city attorney to petition the Board of County Commissioners of Wood County, Ohio to change township lines. Resolution number 3696 for second reading. Resolution authorizing the mayor of the city of Bowling Green, Ohio to file an application and execute a contract upon grant application approval under the Community Development Block Grant Entitlement Program as authorized by Housing and Community Development Act of 1974 as amended. Resolution number 3697 for second reading, resolution authorizing the mayor of the city of Bowling Green, Ohio to file a capital and operating plan for the years 2018 through 2021 with the Ohio Department of Transportation for grants through the U.S. Department of Transportation as authorized under federal transit laws as codified 49 U.S.C. section 5311 financial assistance for other than urbanized areas. Resolution number 3698 for second reading, resolution adopting and authorizing an amended BG Transit drug and alcohol testing policy. Ordinance number 8655 for second reading, ordinance authorizing the municipal administrator to advertise for bids and enter into a contract or contracts for sidewalk improvements, pavement striping, de-icing salt, and improving streets, alleys, and other public ways in the city of Bowling Green, Ohio. Ordinance number 8656 for second reading, ordinance authorizing the municipal administrator to advertise for bids and enter into a contract or contracts and or participate in state of Ohio or federal purchasing programs for the purchase of vehicles and equipment as well as the trade-in or outright sale of vehicles and equipment being replaced and or no longer needed for municipal purposes and declaring an emergency. Mr. President, Mr. Jeffers. I would like to move that we amend ordinance 8656 by substitution. Uh, there was an omission of including utilities director in the authorization. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Okay, would you please call the roll? Gordon? Yes. Harold? Yes. Jeffers? Yes. Robinette? Yes. Roland? Yes. San Ferdino? Yes. Osbacher? Yes. The motion passes. Ordinance 8656 is amended by substitution. Ordinance number 8657 for second reading. Ordinance authorizing the municipal administrator and the utilities director to enter into a contract or contracts with specified vendors for work that may exceed $50,000 annually for calendar year 2018. 
Mr. President. Mr. Jefferson. I would like to move to amend ordinance 8657 by substitution. And this is to include a uh, fence company that will be involved in the green space project. Second. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Okay, would you please call the roll. Harold? Yes. Jeffers? Yes. Robinette? Yes. Roland? Yes. Zanfordino? Yes. Osbacher? Yes. Warden? Yes. The motion passes. Ordinance 8657 is amended by a substitution. <coughs> Ordinance number 8658 for second reading, ordinance amending and adopting section 33.01A, G, and N, section 33.20G, and section 33.39, and abolishing section 33.41 of the codified ordinances of the City of Bowling Green, Ohio, regarding employment policies. Ordinance number 8659, for second reading, ordinance authorizing an agreement between the City of Bowling Green, Ohio and the Wood County Regional Airport Authority. Ordinance number 8660 for second reading, ordinance amending and adopting section 95A.07C1 and section 95A.10C3 and creating sections 95A.80 through 95A.95 of the codified ordinances of the City of Bowling Green, Ohio, regarding income tax regulations and declaring an emergency. Ordinance number 8661, for second reading, ordinance amending and adopting changes to Chapter 94 of the codified ordinances of the City of Bowling Green, Ohio, regarding garbage and litter. And there is no legislation for third reading. Thank you, Kay. <coughs> That completes the items under agenda this evening. Is there any other business to come before City Council? Seeing none. Oh, I just sorry, have a quick John. question, sorry. Mr. President. Yes. Uh, our next meeting is on the uh, Tuesday the 20th, I believe, or will it be on Tuesday the Tuesday 20th? Tuesday the 20th. That's yes. correct. Yes. Right. Allow mm -hmm. for President's Day. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Is there a motion for adjournment? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The motion passes. We are adjourned.